What's going on fellas? I'm burning the midnight oil and high gear tonight. Just want to show Muhammad what's going on. We're working on his project this week. And um, basically I've got a huge stack of stainless steel 304 plates sitting here that um, need a little bit of a cleanup. I haven't quite got the plasma table dialed in to where there's no dross. But um, there's a little bit of some stalactite and stalagmite action going on on these plates. And that needs to be ground off so that they don't touch each other during the compression process of tightening up the gaskets. I've got a lot of these to do. There's 81 plates in this cell. This thing's going to be monumental. Um, it might be a YouTube record breaker on gas output. I don't know yet. I don't want to say that for, you know, I'm not trying to do that. It's just that we may push 50 liters a minute with this thing. We're going to try and crank 10,000 watts of power into it, which is going to give us around 3,400 amps of electrical current for the electrolysis process. Because we'll be using a dry cell when you do the equation of watts divided by volts per plate gap, gap you get about 3,400 amps. And that right there is the stalactites I mentioned. We don't want those touch and shorten the plate out. And, uh... Be right back. All right, Muhammad. Just a quick update for you, man. I know you're dying to see what's going on over here. Here is one of the end plates. Now, this is basically just an electrode terminal. And, um... This steel section is for reinforcement because we're going to be compressing this filter press configuration bipolar electrolysis cell. And um, we've got some dielectric paste on here. Or actually, this isn't dielectric paste. This is liquid tape to act as a dielectric barrier for the all thread that's going to hold the cell together. These um, welds have been passivated. It was quite the chore putting this thing together because as you can see here, the plastic constituent of that connector, the CPVC connector, and uh, we have two of these. The other one's outside drying. And um, here are the plates we're gonna be using. These are 16 gauge. And these are the inner plates with the smaller electrolyte channel. And here are the gaskets. Kind of keeping the dust off them the best I can. Huge stack of gaskets there. There's 90 gaskets there. We're not going to be doing 90 plates to start. And all this stuff over here is the rest of the equipment. I have a radiator here, a couple of electrolyzer tanks and a bubbler, and the, uh, the pump system. And these copper strips right here are bus bars that I made to slide very tightly onto these end plates. They will slide over this and there will be a jumper wire that goes from this bus bar to the other one so that um, we're distributing the electricity over this electrode plate evenly. If we were to just have one electrode connection here, we would see about a three to 400 degree temperature change right here in this path. And the energy uh, density would be far higher right here than it was right here. And it's just, uh, very problematic because stainless steel is like a a 1.2 or a 3 point something on the copper standard scale just a quick interruption guys because it is very important this is the scale I was referring to you can see on this scale that copper is represented by a hundred percent conductivity and you can see that gold isn't all that great of a conductor silver is far superior than gold who would have thought you know well Stainless steel is all the way down here. What did I say? Three or whatever, but that's pretty lame. So basically what's happening is a tremendous amount of electrical heat is being created. Up to 200 watts in some cases, which can get things very hot. In our case, it's going to be about 400 watts if we were to just have a single terminal. So this is called the um, International Annealed Copper Standard. Very neat little chart, and it's eye-popping. Lead 
It's just terrible. Why are we using this stuff as battery terminals, one would ask. Is anti-corrosion really worth all that? Silver being 105, 105 on that scale and copper being 100. Stainless steel is like way down into the three and four somewhere, I believe. I'll have to double check that. But um, that is what this is all about here. So we will have a main terminal that connects to this copper strip and a jumper wire will go from this copper strip to the one on the other side here to spread that power out so that we have an even current distribution along this end plate. So we would start out with one of these massive hole plates here. But that's essentially what we're gonna have. And it's just gonna be a big old stack. And um, that contraption sitting out there is the frame for this bad boy. So what else do we got? Here is the air compressor I told you about that we're gonna try out to start. This is gonna inject air into the system to mitigate the flash back problems and also make a more manageable combustion fuel stream. Um, I do not have the 10,000 watt SCR yet. This was supposed to be it. They sent me a PWM instead. I need an SCR for what we're doing, but I do have everything else for that. The heat sink for the diode. Um, all of this will be going on to that to hold everything up in place. I have all of the uh, the plumbing and a whole bunch of all threads somewhere. Most of it's in there, but uh, we are good to go here. We're gonna be getting this thing together pretty quick. For the most part, I've been waiting for glue to dry and I've been waiting on that SCR. Some of this stuff I have added secondary glue seals to. You kind of have to on this kind of stuff because there's not a whole lot of thread there for thread tape to work out with. So that was kind of a must. But uh, we are in there. I have another pump for this. It's a refurbished one, but it's a, it's a pretty good pump. It's a $100 pump. We're good to go on that. I've also got a bunch of electrical components that we're gonna need. Here are the main lugs, the main terminals. This is for my jumper. And I've got a bunch of switches and stuff also that are gonna be going on this bad boy. So uh, pretty much all of this equipment is gonna be in that frame. Let's get a wrap of this thing. basically the gist of it. I wanted to have plenty of room to work with. I'm tired of cramming everything into a small space all the time. Like the old Russian satellite here. I've done a lot of work to this thing. I want to take the side panel off of it and do some of the other stuff we talked about. And uh, man, we're getting closer. We're still waiting on that SCR. This cell will go together in no time, but I just wanted to give you a quick update of what's going on over here. These end plates were really uh, quite the feat, but uh, they're done now. This here is just a stand that I'm gonna set everything on. I have one more of these end plates, and we're gonna go from there. I almost forgot to show you this bubbler. This is the dispersion system I told you about. This is gonna channel all the bubbles out to flow in a more radial pattern, a radial array, that is. And I've got some real nice screen to go with it. We'll be taking advantage of this stuff right here on the bottom of that and on the top. What else was I gonna show you here? I think that's about it. So I will holler at you when I got more and I'll let you know when the electronics show up.